Lecture 6.2, Integration by Substitution. And this is the birthplace of Martin Luther King Jr. in Atlanta, Georgia, at the Martin Luther King Center. The chain rule allows us to differentiate a wide variety of functions, but we are able to find antiderivatives for only a limited range of functions. We can sometimes use substitution to rewrite functions in a form that we can integrate. Example one, the integral of x plus two to the fifth power, dx. If we let u equal x plus 2, then taking the derivative of both sides, du would equal dx. We can substitute in and get the integral of u to the fifth, du. The variable of integration must match the variable in the expression. Now that's easy to integrate. We get 1 sixth u to the sixth plus c. Don't forget to substitute the value for u back into the problem. So our answer is x plus 2 to the sixth over 6 plus c. Example, this was exploration one in some calculus book. The integral of the square root of one plus x squared times two x dx. One of the clues that we look for is if we can find a function and its derivative in the integrand. The derivative of 1 plus x squared is 2x dx. So we let u equal 1 plus x squared and du equal 2x dx. So substituting, we get the integral of u to the 1 half du. Raising the exponent by 1 and multiplying by the reciprocal, we get 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus c. And then we substitute back in the value of u. So we have 2 thirds 1 plus x squared quantity to the 3 halves plus c. Note that this only worked because of the 2x in the original. Many integrals cannot be done by substitution. Example two, the integral of radical four x minus one dx. Let u equal four x minus one. Then du equals four dx. We don't see a 4 dx in the original, but if we divide by 4, we do see a dx. So we solve for dx and substitute. Now we have the integral of u to the 1 half times 1 fourth du, or 2 thirds u to the 3 halves times 1 fourth plus c which gives us 1 6 u to the 3 halves plus c. And we still have to remember, substitute back in. So we get 1 6 times 4x minus 1 quantity to the 3 halves plus c. Example 3, the integral of cosine 7x plus 5 dx. We try letting u equal 7x plus 5. So du equals 7dx. 
1 7th du equals dx. Now we can substitute. The integral of cosine u times 1 7th du. The antiderivative of cosine is sine, and the 1 7th can come out front. So we get 1 7th sine u plus c, or 1 7th sine 7x plus 5 plus c. Here's another example. The integral of x squared sine x cubed dx. Let u equal x cubed. So du equals 3x squared dx. I don't have 3x squared dx in the original problem, but I do have an x squared dx. So I can divide by 3 and get 1 third du equals x squared dx. We solve for x squared dx because we can find it in the integrand. So now we have 1 third times the integral of sine u du. Which is negative 1 third cosine u plus c or negative 1 third cosine x cubed plus c. Example 7. Integral of sine to the fourth x times cosine x dx, which we could rewrite as integral of sine x to the fourth cosine x dx. Let u equal sine x, du equals cosine x dx. When we substitute, we get an expression that's easy to integrate. We get 1 fifth u to the fifth plus c, but remember u was sine x. So we have 1 fifth sine to the fifth x plus c. Integral from 0 to pi over 4, tangent x secant squared x dx. The technique is a little different for definite integrals. Let u equal tangent x. du equals secant squared x dx. We can find new limits and then we don't have to substitute back u of 0 is the tangent of 0, which is 0. u of pi over 4 is the tangent of pi over 4, which is 1. So when we write the integral, we put in the new lower and upper limits. So we have the integral from 0 to 1 of u du, which is 1 half u squared from 0 to 1 or one half. We could have substituted back and used the original limits. Using the original limits, we let u equal tangent x, du equal secant squared x dx. Now you might write the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of u du. But that would be wrong. The limits don't match. These are limits for x, not for u. So we can't do it that way. We leave the limits out until you substitute back. So we get 1 half u squared. Then we substitute and put the original limits back in. So we have 1 half tangent x squared from 0 to pi over 4, or 1 half tangent pi over 4 squared 
minus one half tangent of zero squared, which is one half times one squared minus one half times zero squared, or one half. This is usually more work than finding new limits. Here's another example. The integral from negative 1 to 1 of 3x squared times radical x cubed plus 1 dx. Once again, we see a function or an expression x cubed plus 1 and its derivative. 3x squared. So that gives us a hint that this is a substitution problem. We let u equal x cubed plus 1, du equals 3x squared dx, u of negative 1 equals 0. I get that by putting negative 1 into the expression for u, and I get negative 1 plus 1 or 0. u of 1 equals 2. So my integral is the integral from 0 to 2 of u to the 1 half du, or 2 thirds u to the 3 halves evaluated from 0 to 2, which is 2 thirds u to the 3 halves, or 2 thirds times 2 radical 2, or 4 radical 2 over 3. In another generation or so, we might be able to use the calculator to find all integrals. Until then, remember that more than half the AP exam and possibly half the nation's college professors do not allow calculators. You must practice finding integrals by hand until you are good at it.